You guys used to know Devontae Smith as the guy who made the catch in the national championship game, but now he is known as the guy who most recently won the Heisman Trophy. Devontae Smith has made college football history with this, and I am so happy for what he has accomplished, and this is a bright spot in what has been a tough year for college football. Smith was an underdog as a kid, but he worked hard and became a big time player coming out of high school, but in a crowded group of wide receivers, he was always overlooked, and now he has shined and is the best of the four. Today we'll talk about the journey of Devontae Smith and how he won the 2020 Heisman Trophy. But first, be sure to subscribe, give the video a like, let me know another future video topic I should do, and turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload. Now let's get started and tell the Heisman Trophy story of Devontae Smith. At one point, I got pretty confused making this video because there's actually another Devontae Smith who is committed to Alabama in this year's recruiting class. He grew up in Amite, Louisiana, a town that was a mix of trailers, rundown houses, abandoned shacks, and small homes. From a young age, he loved football, and he actually had a bond with a barber, and this guy was a really big deal, and he always gets his hair cut from this guy. It's more than just a barber shop, though. It's a place where young, sometimes underprivileged athletes come to enhance their recruitment through this guy named Sanders and all his various connections. He'll bring them to camps, expose their talents to big name coaches, and he mentors them, all from his little haircut shop. He has a ton of items that are football related from his clients, and he's had 22 of his 28 kids receive Division I athletic scholarships. He's shown a bright light to an area that college coaches used to drive straight through. He uses his barbershop money to pay for the kids, but they have to have above a 3.0 GPA. Before he got to MI High School, he played corner, receiver, kick returner, and this left him on the field for roughly 90 of every 100 snaps. He built his reputation in the town park as the scrawny kid who would just never go away no matter how much bigger the other guys were. He was 120 pounds as a high school freshman, but he kept returning, always fighting, and he was always there to play. They used to tell him he was too little or too small, but he would always come back the next day, and he would prove people wrong. He went on to go to an Alabama camp, but despite a catching performance that actually had the coaches buzzing, the coaches would tell him that he was not big enough, and he got really mad at this. Eventually, he would prove them wrong, though, and Alabama offered him a scholarship, and he committed to the Crimson Tide. He chose the Tide over LSU and Miami, and the Tigers faithful weren't too happy with this, quote, barber guy. Smith was a very exciting talent, and he was six foot one, which was pretty decent size for an outside receiver, but he was also fast enough to play anywhere on the field, he had super long arms, and he was going to be a matchup problem for years. 24-7 Sports listed him as the second best player in the state of Louisiana, the number 9 wide receiver, and the 62nd best player in the class of 2017. His decision to leave the state for an SEC West rival did ruffle some feathers of the local people, but his family, as you might expect, were all in on the Crimson Tide, even if some of them spent their entire life rooting for LSU. Everyone knew he was going to be good, but he joined a class of wideouts which included Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs, and that was a huge class for Billy Napier, the now head coach at Louisiana. He caught his first touchdown in a 59-0 win over Vanderbilt, and he really was not much of a difference maker for them. That was until the Mississippi State game where he caught the game-winning touchdown. The Tide cruised to a title against Georgia, and they found themselves in a hole with a freshman quarterback by the name of Tua Tagovailoa. Smith would catch the game-winning pass, and the game was over, and they won the title. The catch won Alabama a championship, and that would not have been such a good thing for his hometown if it wasn't for Devontae. They absolutely hated Alabama there, but because of Devontae, they were happy for him. In fact, they actually held a parade for him and his teammate named Shaheem Carter, and they rode the two players in the backseat of a convertible down the street, and they were celebrating a championship for the Crimson and White, all because of that catch. Devontae said, quote, before the play, I figured we were going to have to take a shot. I told Tua to trust me, and he did it. He trusted me, believed in me, and he threw it, and we won. As a freshman, Smith caught eight passes for 160 yards and three touchdowns, but he had two of the biggest touchdowns of the year. He was expected to step up in 2018, and he did to a degree. He'd catch touchdowns against Arkansas State and A&M before his first 100-yard performance against Missouri. He had another big game in their Iron Bowl win with two at the helm, and the Tide were headed back to the SEC Championship game. Jalen Hurts would fuel a late comeback, and they would beat Georgia again. He had a career-high six catches for 100 yards and a touchdown in their win over Oklahoma, and then he caught six passes for 65 yards in their blowout loss at the hands of Trevor Lawrence and the Clemson Tigers. He had a solid sophomore year as he caught 42 passes for 693 yards and six touchdowns. He was seen as an NFL prospect going into the season, but he was overshadowed. Of course, he was playing with Jerry Judy, one of the fastest players in college football in Henry Ruggs, and a human highlight reel in Jalen Waddell, so it's not that difficult to get overlooked in a receiver room like that. He had a breakout game against South Carolina where he'd catch eight passes for 136 yards and two touchdowns, 
and he was starting to become a serious threat. Two weeks later, he had one of the best performances ever as he caught 11 passes for 274 yards and five touchdowns. And this is one of the best performances in college football history. A few weeks later, in a pivotal matchup with number two LSU, he caught seven passes for 213 yards and two touchdowns, one of which was a 90 plus yard catch to keep the game close at the end. Burrow and LSU were on another level though, then they would lose two at an injury against Mississippi State. He finished the season strong, but Bama lost to Auburn in the Iron Bowl, and a third straight title appearance was not in the cards. He caught a touchdown in their Citrus Bowl, went over Michigan, and Devontae Smith became a member of the All-SEC first team after a breakout year. He caught 68 passes for 1,256 yards and 14 touchdowns, and he definitely could have left for the NFL, but he decided to come back. Going into 2020, Mac Jones, Najee Harris, and Jalen Waddle were back, so he was going to get a chance to really shine because of all the unproven wide receiver depth outside of Waddle. He'd catch 8 passes for 89 yards against Missouri, and then 6 passes for 63 yards against AM, but those weren't the numbers people were expecting. He had a field day against Ole Miss, he caught 13 passes for 164 yards and a touchdown, and he followed it up on the brightest stage against number 3 Georgia with 11 catches for 167 yards and 2 touchdowns. He basically dominated in every game for the rest of the year, and some of the highlights included 200 yards and 4 touchdowns against Mississippi State, and 231 yards and 3 touchdowns in a revenge game against LSU. In the SEC Championship, he had 15 catches for 184 yards and 2 touchdowns, and Bama was headed to the college football playoff. Against Notre Dame, he put up 130 yards and 3 touchdowns, and it looked like NCAA Football 14 at times with how crazy the numbers were. For the first time since Desmond Howard, it looked like Devontae Smith could be the first wide receiver to win the award in a long time, and tonight it finally happened. The finalists included Florida's Kyle Trask, his teammate quarterback Mac Jones, and Clemson phenom Trevor Lawrence. He won the award and I'm so happy for him and props to Devontae Smith for his incredible achievement and he truly made history tonight and I hope he is reunited with Tua in Miami with the third overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. Devontae Smith has been electric this year and his name will forever be etched in the history books of college football and will be another historic wide receiver to come through Alabama with names like Amari Cooper, Calvin Ridley, Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, and Jalen Waddell. What do you guys think? If you're an Alabama fan, do you think he deserved to win the Heisman Trophy? And in general, do you think he deserved to win this award? And who do you honestly think will win it next year? I know we're going out on a limb, but I want to know your early predictions for the 2021 award, and I'm excited to see what happens. Devontae Smith has an incredible journey, and I hope for his success at the next level in the NFL, and I cannot wait to watch him. Before you go, if you enjoyed his journey or love that Devontae won the Heisman, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos. I have a ton of videos about Alabama football, so be sure to check out all of them in the playlist down in the comment section and on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.